Uh, kia ora koutou, uh, ko wai au e tuake nei, uh, maunga te reki ronga, wai makarere te awa e rere ana ki te tai a maha nui, tu ahuriri te tangata, tu ahiwi toku marae, uh, ngai tu ahuriri me ngati heni o mātua o ku hapu, uh, kei kai poi taku kai ngai nai nei, ko Joseph Allen toku ingwa. Um, literally translated, I come from a small humble village of Tuahiwi, um, where I was raised on the five crossroads till my mum and dad bought a house or built a house in Kaiapoi. Um, and I'm a fake. Um, I come from a blue collar family. Um, I didn't have a university, well, I didn't go to university. I didn't have a formal uh, qualification until relatively late in life. Both my baby sister and I got our qualifications as part of our work rather than going through tertiary study. Um, part of that is to do with our background. Um, we came, as I said, from a blue collar family. Uh, my dad was a diesel mechanic and my mum is my Naitahu parent. Um, when I was about 16, uh, their marriage dissolved and so the obligation to go out into the workforce and get a job um, was cemented by the vocational guidance officer at Kaiapoi High School who gave me a list of the companies who were engaging apprenticeships in the area at that time with the expectation, well boy, you need a job, so off you go. Um, and my father supported that point of view. Um, I went to Australia on a summer holiday that lasted 18 years. I worked a number of, number of jobs over there um, culminating with the Australian Postal Service as the Postal Delivery Coordinator. And when I left in 1997 and returned to New Zealand, I was on about 70k a year. Good money for somebody without a formal qualification. I arrived back in New Zealand about the time that the Naitahu, Deed of, uh, Naitahu, Naitahu Settlement Act was going through. Um, and so I immersed myself back in my culture to catch up on the gap in my knowledge over the 20 years, almost 20 years I'd spent in Australia. In a case of serendipity, as one door closed on me, another door would open. Um, so as part of the Runanga Treaty Partner Relationship, there was a Papatipu Runanga Open Day with the Department of Conservation and the Waimakariri Area Office. Um, I went on a trip and got talking to one of the planners, one of the program managers, and before I knew it, I'd signed a temporary contract to work on tracks and hut assets not a background in heritage yet. Um, at that stage, the treaty partner relationship was foreign both to my people at Tuahiwi and the department. And that's where I started to get some traction to become the person I am today. I was able to offer a cultural insight to explain 101 to Department of Conservation staff some of the concepts that my relations were talking about. That served me in good stead. And so they realised that A, I was reasonably intelligent, B, reasonably articulate, and C, I could tell a good story. The next course of my learning was to run summer interpretation programs out at Arthur's Pass National Park in Kuratafiti, speaking about Matauranga and Pudako of my ancestors, our oral traditions. Oral traditions generally weren't given the credibility um, that they deserved. In fact, you might say they weren't um, valued, they were less valuable than the paper that they weren't written on. Um, the Naitahu Deed of Settlement actually required Naitahu prove in paper what you lost before the Crown would give it back. And so our tribe documented our loss and our um, alienation from our lands and the breaches in the contract of the Crown. And that started to trigger some stuff in me. My Department of Conservation work then saw me offered a job by my cousin David Brennan, who runs a tourist um, program or, or uh, attraction at Willowbank. And so I was the tour guide simply because I was working at docks, so I knew about conservation and native animals, and I was also a good storyteller. I was then fortunate enough in 2007 that a guy called Bob Robertson thought it'd be a really good idea to build a city or a suburb, a new town, in an area bang smack in cultural heritage central of Ngai Tuahuriri, 
right next to the Kaiapoi Pa site, Pegasus Town. I was engaged by Witta Archaeology, um, who Jean had a photo of Dan Witter in one of her photos, and as I've always said, that job depended on my knowledge of all things Naitahu. Go out there in the field and either identify where there might be a site, monitor the machines uncovering sites, and then talk to the archaeologist and offer my insight on what that site might be, what activity took place to make it look like that. Friday always came too quickly, Monday never came quickly enough. What I took to that job, transferable skills was a word that Corbin Tiaiki used in his presentation, was high school tech drawing. Okay? So I, I knew how to draw stuff, and that meant I could record something called stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is just drawing pictures of the soil matrix and deposits in there and labelling them. Doesn't sound like much, but if you're one of a bunch of Māori from Tuahiwi that are there as part of the mitigation and you've got added skills, all of a sudden you're not just a token attendee, but you're actually a valued member of the team. And then so by using those other transferable skills that I had, but didn't actually connect with, oh, I could use this here, I could use that there, I became more and more important to Dan and Alison to the point that in 2007 at Hanma, at the New Zealand Archaeological Association conference, I delivered a paper to a room full of archaeologists with about three million years of experience in New Zealand and, and prehistoric archaeology. And I did it, I did it verbally in the manner of my ancestors, an oral presentation. And I told them about a site we discovered and how, by using tikanga Māori and the way we do things, that I could date a site based on the activities that were performed in that area by putting them in the order they would have happened if it was me. At the end of my presentation, one question from a little woman with about a million of those years of archaeological in New Zealand experience asked me, I made the point that the shells that were part of this site were used to shave or cut hair or the placenta of a baby. Her only question was, why do you suppose it was for that? The rest of my presentation went past unquestioned. You have no idea how gratifying that is for my ego when I sat down in the hotel room later on that night thinking, my God, what have I just done? What I'm trying to tell you is that within you, you will find the skills. Okay? Going back to what I was saying about vocational guidance, you're in a room where we're talking to you about heritage. Somewhere in your mind, there, or in, in your persona, there is a place for you. That's why you're here. If I move on, so Pegasus, I got offered an interview at Turunanga and Aitahu for a role in the Whakapapa unit. I had no overwhelming interest in genealogy. I didn't really fully understand what I brought to that job after I was successful in the interview was accurate record keeping, site records, as archaeologists will understand, site one, level one, west quadrant four, feature one, A, two, one, A, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I started my work with the Whakapapa unit, doing exactly the same kind of mahi as Helen Brown. Helen Brown gets to publish a nice book every two or three or four years of 50 biographies that touches hundreds of descendants of the faces in those books. I get to research whakapapa of individuals, collate all of the information that I can find and present it to them one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. Her job and my job are exactly the same. We're detectives. 
Essentially, that's our role. We go out, we go out and we research, and then we interrogate our findings, and then we present them in a court of law to the owner of the information. Best job in the world. You will find within your psyche <clears throat> the trigger to find where it is that you want to be. My suggestion is <clears throat> you won't find it immediately. It will find you. All you have to do is persevere gathering those transferable skills and eventually you'll end up as I am in a job now that I couldn't leave even if I wanted to. Kia ora.